So Christmas is around the corner. It is. Like, right around the corner. <laughs> Are you excited about it? Yeah, today's the 3rd of December. It's been kind of a crazy year. Uh, I would say that for sure. This is the first episode of The Deckers. I I figured I don't really want to talk about myself, so I'd, I'd rather just ask you questions because you're better at talking. Oh, thanks. I'm known for needing a lot of words in a day. Most so, women do, but I need a particularly large amount. <laughs> a large amount of words? A large amount of words. So what are your thoughts about Christmas this year? Oh, um, I think Christmas is a thing that everybody really, really needs right now. I, I think Christmas is like the one time of year that you can give yourself permission for some reason. Like as Americans, I feel like sometimes we need a reason to do things or we love to label things. And so I think Christmas spirit brings out this cheeriness and this different spirit inside of people where they're more generous and maybe they're more patient or it's the exact opposite. But I feel like right now with the state of the country and just life in general, I think people need something to focus on and to be happy about. They're looking for a purpose. They're looking for a to-do list. They're looking for something to rally behind because it's just been 11 months of uncertainty and doubt and frustration and disappointment maybe and um anxiety and so now it's like it's christmas like okay like we can decorate we can make cookies we can do all these things um but But i wish are you disappointed and anxious i'm not disappointed and anxious but the world is but i think the world is what are they what are they disappointed and anxious about oh um i would say right now I, i mean i'm sure well i'm sure half the country you know with not to talk about politics, but I think half of the country is disappointed in what's going to happen in January. I think um, people might be disappointed that they're not going to have money for Christmas. I think there's people who just got their jobs taken away from them with more closures that they're not going to have any money to buy, you know, anything this Christmas. Um, I think people are disappointed just with life, that life's dealt them a, a bad card it's like, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why, like, what is the bigger purpose out of all of this? So for those that are listening, you're going to hear our son Luke in the background being taken care of right now, watched over by the amazing Ashley South. <laughs> She's the best. She's awesome. Yeah. But, you know, there's, I guess there, there are worried and anxious people out there, but I'm, I'm curious to hear about like to hear from the people that aren't worried or anxious like the people that this has been like the best year this has been the best year for me i don't know about you but i mean i've really enjoyed 2020 2020 has i would say for our family has been um i would say that we're we we're immensely blessed should we be guilty about that um no i don't think it's something to feel guilty about as long as it's as long as we remember why like the source of why we're having a good year. Why are we having a good year? Um, because I think that this was the year that you and I made active decisions that we weren't going to stay stuck in old patterns anymore and that we were going to step out of our fear and out of our denial and mm. find and to step into the things that we needed to find intimacy in, like finance and um finance is scary though. Oh. <laughs> ah! Yes, it is. Money's, so scary. Money's scary. Intimacy is scary in any area, you know, because what happens when you turn the TV off? Right. What are we going to talk about? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I I feel like you and I were allergic to small talk. Like we, we go to people's houses or we're in conversations and like we ask them what their deepest, darkest fears are and if they have any addictions. Like we just go right. straight there. Yeah. Um, I prefer, I mean, I prefer that. I mean, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a household where like feelings were welcomed. Um, you know, like, don't get me wrong. Like every person has like their stuff and their wounds and their blind spots and stuff like that. But at the very baseline, at least it was like acceptable to be like, this is what I'm feeling and this is what's going on with me. And like to like talk through those things. And Mm. so I'm, 
I'm equal parts grateful and thankful that that's a space that you and I have in our relationship. But then in addition to that, um, I think it, it, no, it's totally fine. <laughs> no, he can make all the noise he wants. It's fine. It's cool. Um, he's so playing with just this. Just to like, paint the picture, there's a there's like a mat thing with, with toys hanging from it and then a a book made of crinkle paper. It's like every baby's dream. And he likes to eat it. Yeah. He likes to eat the book. Yeah. Hopefully one day he reads a book yeah. instead of just eating it. Shout out to Lovery. Maybe sponsor us. Thanks. I think Lovery's nice. I was scared <laughs> of their toys because I thought, like, what are these hipster toys? Like, I know. This is not Fisher Price. This is something different. Yeah. I was a little scared of it, too. Like, am I cool enough to have the subscription? Um, are we cool enough as a family? Are we cool enough as parents to have this? But then... Do you think we're a cool family? I feel it. Like, I, I, yeah, I think so. As much as I don't want to say that, like I, I always come from a place of like weird, awkward humility sometimes where I don't want to like step into something. But, but yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're making a cool foundation for our family right now. And hmm. we're working on all of the stuff that, I mean, I feel like when we share some of the things that we're working on, people are like, surprised and uh, sort of it's a redefinition of cool it depends what your definition of cool is i mean yeah. if your definition of cool is living by the world yeah i mean I, cool is a subjective word right like what is cool my dad used to always say when i was growing up that people who think they're cool annoy those of us who know we are <laughs> um but i I I think it's subjective. I mean, like, what's cool? Is that based on what, like, you and I always talk about, like, what's the golden calf, right? Like, what is what is cool? Like, and that thing that's cool always changes. So it's almost imperative that as a person and as a wife or a husband or a father and a mom, like, you define for yourself what's cool. And by cool, I mean, like, that could even just be what's our standard, like, what are our values? How about this? What What did cool used to be for you and what is it today? Okay. Um, cool used to mean um, it was like Abercrombie and Fitch. It was, it was UGG boots. What year was this? Like, like the heyday was like 04, 05. Okay, so this is 2004, 2005 cool, Taylor's version. Yeah. And ironically, it was also like the years of like my most deepest traumas. But at the same time, it was like on the exterior, everything was great, but internally everything was falling apart. But I had that Abercrombie polo and that mousse to get me by, you know, or the jean skirt and the boots. So the platform sandals or the long, long hair with the highlights. It was like the, the time. Of the so day. in the midst of all that emotional wreck, you just covered yourself in nice clothes and just a warm hug from the Abercrombie mousse? Yeah, I mean, I tried. Did the moose hug back? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> he wasn't very friendly. <laughs> no, it's it's weird. It's uh, it's weird. I I I think I was the same way. I, clothes, things, status. Mm -hmm. uh, often they just. If I could look a certain way to people, and they could see me in a certain way, whatever that was, mm -hmm. I was m more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And then I think, um, yeah, I, I, I had some, some weird situations happen in junior high where I had, like, I came to school one day and all of a sudden, like, it was literally like the mean girls, like, you can't sit with us. And I didn't. You actually had one of those? I totally did. I, like, showed up to the table, went to sit down, and they're like, you can't sit here. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, you have to make a reservation two weeks in advance. And I said, what is this, like a four-star restaurant? Like... And they said, yeah. And I remember just... So everybody, California, this is... Like, this actually happens here. I think it happens... I think, honestly, I think it happens everywhere. Hmm. I think every kid... There was actually a campaign at one point called You Can Sit With Us. And it was like an anti-bullying campaign to help empower kids to, you know, like, be more inclusive and, like, allow other kids to sit with them that maybe they didn't know and things like that. And... Um, I cut you off, so I'm sorry. No, it didn't, no, we're just talking. I like it. All right, and then, and so moving forward, your definition of cool, and then and then in middle school, like you weren't cool enough to sit at the table, but then what really is cool? And then what is cool to what is cool today? Because that your version of cool is, is different. Yeah, I would argue you're more cool now. Thanks. Um, 
I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I think everybody wants to think that their spouse thinks they're cool. Um, but I would say my definition of cool now is is trying to be um, as aligned with myself as, as possible and to be aligned in my marriage and to be aligned with God and centered on, like we always talk about that narrow path, even though sometimes I want to go to the wide path and it's really tiring and emotionally tumultuous. And then I come back to center and I'm like, okay, this feels better. So to be clear, the narrow path is, you know, choosing to follow Christ, choosing to live your life a different way Mm -hmm. than the ways of the world, which are really easy, Mm -hmm. very, very, very easy to live that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I do think we're, we're, we're walking in narrower paths. I mean, together. Yeah. We were both walking very separate wide paths when we met. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we thought that we were a lot more together than we were. But then we, I think we had some stuff happen and we realized that we really weren't. And I think back to the 2020 disappointment topic, our, like this has been our best year because I think we just, we were forced to change. And, and I... I don't like maybe like the word change, but we were forced to, forced to grow. Like it, we were on, we like the world just disrupted everybody's pattern and everybody's coped with it differently. But I think that we looked at each other and we said, okay, well we can e- this can either make us better or this is going to make us, lack of a better word, bitter. Um, and how what do we want to do with it? And you know, we started or when you started, we started you know a new business and. I decided that I wanted to stay sober after being pregnant for, you know, nine months. And we decided that we wanted to start working on our finances together. And, and I mean, like six months later, like things are, things are rocking. And we're parents now. Yeah. We had our son in May. Mm-hmm. You know, it was interesting. So how did you feel when you were, t- you learned that we couldn't go to church anymore? Because we were going, yeah. just to paint a picture. Friday nights, Mm -hmm. Saturday afternoons. Yeah. I would then sometimes go again Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. We would go Sunday morning or you go Saturday night. Yeah. And then Monday night. Mm -hmm. And then maybe something on Wednesday. Yeah, like a night of worship or something. Yeah. And then... I feel like it's like a kind of like a weird analogy. Not like a weird analogy, but it... You know, whenever you decide to do something different, there's automatically because of like that's the way that things work is that when you decide that you want to change is the exact moment that you're going to be flooded with all of the opposition to not do that thing that you decided to do. So when we decided, okay, we really, this is where we want to focus our time and we really like we're going to be as close to God as yeah, we want all to be. All of a sudden we committed. We're like, we're all in on this. Yeah. We're, we're going to go. Like, this is our life now. Mm-hmm. And boom, <laughs> just taken out from underneath us. Yeah. And I think what I learned from that, albeit like being deeply disappointed, I learned that church is not a building. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't get access to God through a building. Right. I'm, I'm proud of the way that I handled I'm I'm proud of the things that I did when I figured out what, like when this whole COVID thing came around. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I got a group of my guy friends together, and we kept meeting on Sundays anyway, and we were watch the church service mm-hmm. when no one was allowed to do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, kept kept business operational and and functioning i'm like all right i'll just spray some freaking lysol in between people that come into the studio and all right we'll do virtual interviews i'm proud of how you handled things thanks i mean i was fortunate that you know we were able to i worked from home i think at the time i was a little bit of a risk like because we were pregnant and our doctor said well if you get covid like you're gonna have to go in for a c-section early and that fear of like Oh. 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 Uh-oh. Bob's got upset. Hi. So we had to take a little break because Lukey got a little bit upset. Yeah. Poor guy. That's okay though. He's he's doing good now. But you mm-hmm. wanted to finish your thought. 
Well, you asked me, you know, how I felt about church closing. Um, I'm a very, so I'm like, I consider myself to be like an extroverted introvert. Um, I was always very extroverted growing up. Um, I've become more introverted over the years. Uh, But it was really hard for me, like feeling like I didn't have a choice, you know, like on what I could do or what I couldn't do. That was really hard for me. Um, But at the same time, I feel like it was sort of like the start of like God breaking a pattern in me to stop realizing that I wasn't, my worth and my value wasn't determined based on my to-do list or like my productivity or my output because it became like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not happy because I just, what did the act of going to church? It was like, why was I going? You know, what was I seeking? And I can still seek that in my own time. Mm. And, um, It was funny, there was like the 2020 Spotify wrap-up thing yesterday, Mm. and one of my top songs was Resurrection, um, or it was called like Resurrecting or something like that by Elevation Worship, and it was my number one song, Mm. and it said the date that I started playing, it was March 24th, Mm. which was like literally one week after (laughs) like the shutdown, and and I remember just sitting there like like listening to the song it's like in your name i come alive to declare your victory the ever the ever it was like the the never ending king is resurrecting me um and it was like this in your name i come alive to declare your victory and it just like kept listening to that lyric like over and over and over again like like this is going to be something that god's going to resurrect and he will sustain us and he'll nurture us and and it doesn't seem like an accident to me that that happened and I worked from home for like six weeks or however many weeks it was and then I went on maternity leave um and our birth plan didn't really (laughs) go the way that we wanted it to either so that was sort of like another preparation of God being like you're gonna have to give this over to me like you're not in control of any of this you're not in control of the lockdown you're not in control of when things are going to reopen you're not in control of how birthing your son is going to go and like give this to me and like let show me like let me show you what I can do but you have to trust me first it's like a trust fall like Mm. the scariest trust fall though because you know I have a control and I've been in a relationship for a really long time um but I think now you know um we've we've made the best out of what we've made we've made lemons out we've made lemonade out of lemons for sure so um i'm feeling far less disappointed than i did in march if anything i feel like god has only started to begin his season of revealing Mm. and resurrecting and um i'm really excited to see what he's going to do in 2021 Hmm. We just go deep. I like it. (laughs) What are you looking forward to in 2021, honey? I don't know. I'm having kind of like a nostalgia for the present. Mm, Like we're going to look back on this moment and be like, wow, that was that was special. No, I'm like looking back on this moment in the moment, like a reverence for the for the now. Mm. So. You know, we're going to start this thing, whatever this is. Yeah. I'll just start it. It's not the, you know, Tony Robbins always says, you know, if you have a, if you have a, a why, you'll figure out the how. And, um, so it's yeah. like why and who, mm-hmm. and then how just comes mm-hmm. and the what sometimes what's not even necessary. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess that's episode one. Yeah, sure. We can call it that episode one it is i suppose you know the way you could support us is um you know rate the podcast leave a review share it with somebody yeah subscribe we're not gonna we're not going to tread lightly here uh we're gonna address some pretty deep stuff yeah through a family angle like a parenting angle relationship angle Mm-hmm. Faith, faith angle, mm-hmm. straight up Christianity. You're this is what this show is. So, 
Yeah. If that's not for you, that's okay. Just keep coming back anyway. Use the shopping cart method. Yeah. Just pick and choose. My mom was big on that when I was growing up. Just keep the things that, that, that land with you and you know, don't pick up the ones that don't. I have a feeling most people will be coming back to hear Taylor. So You're sweet. Thanks. All right. I think that's it. Well, we uh, we love to close out, and uh, we hope that you have a wonderful, awesome, amazing rest of your week. Um, you know, like you said, keep keep you know we'll keep you posted on updates and more episodes. And if you like it, share it, like it, comment, save it. Um, you know, all the good alg- algorithm things. And we appreciate you listening. <laughs>